Hello Mac Warriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of Mac Warrior Online. Today we are playing the Supernova. We are playing the Supernova in the ER Large Laser Build. I did this before the skill tree system and I wanted to try again and it is just dumb. It's just so glorious. I really love this build and uh, yeah, it actually works. Six ER Large Lasers seems to be very hot, but when you look at this, you see why it works. So we got six ER Larges and we've got a shit ton of heat sinks here. We've got 21 heat sinks on top of the 10 that are coming in the engine. So 31 double heat sinks. Make the mech really cool so it is really sustainable and you have a lot of damage here. So the firepower is 66 as an alpha strike. You shouldn't alpha strike though because it will generate a lot of ghost heat if you fire more than two large lasers at the same time. And yeah, that's by the way the reason why I um, uh, separated them into uh, the right and the left arm. Mm, yeah, and I dis didn't distribute them equally. I want to fire them in, in pairs and it kind of makes sense having two pairs together in one arm and one pair in the other arm. If I would have done something like, wait, this ER large then uh, I couldn't really uh, efficiently peek around corners and such. So, uh, of course, it's possible, but I think this one is, is the better option here. Having, having them in the, in the right arm as a quad ER large and uh, two ER larges in the left arm. I have a targeting computer one because it helps targeting weak spots. It boosts up the targeting time uh, by 23%, which is significant. Also increases the beam range, so wh why not have it? Uh, but I'll talk about range in the videos a bit. So um, yeah, that's basically the build. And why is this build now even better than before? Because we have access to skills. And as you can see, I'm taking the laser duration skills, which helps uh, reducing the beam time a lot. So that's really good. And uh, yeah, we have heat gen nodes. And heat gen nodes reduce the heat that our ER larges produce. And uh, that's great. This is so, so good. So um, I really love it. It's, it's it, I have no words for that. It's just such, such a good build. Um, I got a bit of skeletal density. Uh, these were some points that I have left over after finishing everything else. Um, therefore, skeletal density, because the supernova has some structure quirks. I got four points out of here. I mean, wh why not? You can just ditch that if you want and go for more heat management, um, like so. Wait, I'm going to show you. Here are two more heat management skills. And wait, we have two more points that we can invest into, I don't know, maybe cooldown, like, like this. Boom, there we go. Um, but yeah, this is not what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to have a bit of survivability here. Also, I'm going for speed tweak and anchor turn because all of my weapons are arm mounted. I don't need a heavy twist speed here. I just face tank the enemy and grind through their components and I destroy them before they destroy me. The, that is the basic idea. And of course, I'm taking all the cool run notes that I could get because I have so many heat sinks and they just highly benefit from these notes here. So the additional 10% um, heat or cooling efficiency is uh, very, very good. Also, I'm taking 60% radar deprivation and that's it. That is the Supernova ER Large Laser build. And I hope that you have a lot of fun in the two games that are coming. Uh, I definitely had that. And yeah, now it's time to hit the battlefield. All right, we are playing the Frozen City. We are playing Domination and I orientate myself to the Fox 7 Echo 7 area. And uh, I switched to Heat Vision and I wanted to see uh, where that UAV is that was called out there. So Heat Vision always helps uh, when you want to target these and uh, therefore yeah, just, just do it and, and take him down. Now we have ER large lasers, which means we have a lot of range. Um, but please, please, please don't, uh, don't sit back the whole game trying to fight at 800 meters. This is not what I advise. You are still in an assault mech in the supernova and you should share some armor. So I consider armor as a very valuable asset on the battle field as well. It's almost as important as having firepower. So um, make sure that you expose yourself at some point and uh, shoot uh, the enemy and absorb a bit of damage close range. So um, ER large lasers means that you have options. You can shoot at 800 meters, but you don't necessarily need to. And um, therefore, uh, I, I, I like to play it again, like an assault mech here. I want to get someone close. I want to use cover and I want to get into a spot where I uh, can help out the team with my, with my armor as well. And this is exactly what we are doing now. We are orientating ourselves to the right. We see that there is a bunch of enemies going to the Echo 7 area. And as soon as my team comes in, I was like, okay, let's go ahead and push. Let's try to brawl him down because these guys, they are kind of separated there and we can call in a lot of mechs on our side here. So we got a lot of lights and uh, some heavies coming around, uh, also a medium mech. And uh, yeah, we're just going to apply some pressure. And uh, what you should do with that supernova is um, you, you should stay mobile. You 
are not super slow, so you run 63 kph. If you don't have any targets in sight, then go ahead and find yourself some. So don't don't just sit in one spot and, and wait for somebody to come up. When you are cold, when, when your heat scale is at zero, you should find yourself some target and make use of your firepower. If you're not shooting, then uh, yeah, you are kind of wasting time. As you can see, we are grinding through the armor of the grasshopper here, and what I'm doing is I fire my large lasers or ear large lasers in pairs so that I don't, don't generate any ghost heat. But um, yeah, we can put out a constant stream of uh, laser beams here, and that's really cool. So we, we drill through the enemy's armor like it's nothing. And uh, as you can see, uh, we got a, got a huntsman over there who tries to back up, and I want to pressure him. Again, although I have the range, I'm going close because um, yeah, I, I want to absorb some damage for the team. I want to make uh, make him shoot me uh, because uh, yeah my team can then uh, use the time to do something else. We got a cheetah who tries to get in my back but this is not the target I should choose because uh, I have too much firepower to waste on a light moving target. I want to have some more steady targets like the Zeus, like the Orion to see down there. Also they have bigger hitboxes and they are easier to, to pop. So therefore I rely on my team so that they can oh, that they cover my, my back and they did a good job doing so. The Orion here has LRMs, therefore I'm getting really really close. Um, a lot of people mistake a clan LRMs as uh, the OP weapon um, because they still deal damage at close range, but that's actually not, not entirely true. The damage that you put out there with uh, clan LRMs will drop significantly when you get to like zero range. And um, yeah, therefore just get close even to clan missiles. The Zeus here is getting taken down by me and uh, my side horses are open now. But again, this is the situation I want to be in. Um, I want to absorb a bit of damage. And as soon as I see that the Locust is again pushing behind me, trying to get into my back, I ignore him. I don't turn around because there are still enemies that are bigger threats on the battlefield, like that Mauler here, like that guy on top in the Fox 4 area. And therefore, again, I, I leave it to my team to take care of the Locust because I am the one with the big firepower that needs to take down the big targets. So my center also is get a lot of damage right now and here comes my friend the cheetah from the first phase again and uh, yeah I lose a significant amount of my heat management with that not only because I lose uh, a lot of heat sinks but also the XL engine uh, if you uh, if you lose a side torso with that clan XL engine then uh, yeah you will get um, a heat penalty for that. But anyway, um, the cheetah is the last enemy, we try to hunt him down, we try to uh, focus him, but he's doing a good job splashing all the incoming damage and there you can see, if I would have turned around earlier, um, I, I, I just can't bring him down. He's splashing the incoming damage so so well and you should always go for bigger targets when you are shooting with these ER large lasers here. The good thing is um, that I finally get a hit to his side also and I got the kill as well. So it was an interesting game and uh, again, this is this is how I see um, the supernova, how I see the role of a supernova. You have the range, but for me it's only an option, so getting someone close to uh, get your targets right is, I think, mandatory. Anyway, 972 damage, got 4 kills, 8 assists, 3 kill moth damage dealt and 5 components destroyed and we are going over to the next game right now. All right, second game of the day. We are playing the River City and we are playing Assault. And what we wanted to do here is we wanted to take the airfield because we wanted to go uh, the shortest way to the enemy base. As you can see, the enemy has uh, have set up in the in the center of the map around the citadel, and we trade some hits here. So I'm getting shot with auto cannons, and I retaliate with my ER large lasers. I put out a lot of damage here because uh, I'm shooting at about thousand meters. It's almost optimal. It's it's not quite, but almost optimal and I got a good amount of my laser beams to the targets here. Of course, I will splash the damage a lot on that distance, so advanced zoom would have helped a lot. But still, I, I don't consider this mech as a sniper mech. It's rather, again, an assault mech that um, can shoot its weapons while it's walking to the front line here. So we take a bit of cover because uh, I want to uh, wait until my team arrives. Uh, problem is um, I'm peeking with the left side now. So my, my quad ER large lasers are of course on the right side and uh, I can't deal optimal damage here. And therefore uh, I try to, to push out. I wanted to find myself some targets. I can't find some. Uh, it's really tough to again hit something or spot something even on, the, on that distance. And as soon as I see that there are mechs behind us, I instantly retreat. I want to regroup with my team because my team in the uh, Gulf 5 area, they just didn't come. And therefore, I, I came back and I was like, okay, if you have enemies over there, I am coming, I'm helping you out. Uh, I want to I wanna get into the fight here. 
Now we see that there is a guy coming, it is a Banshee, uh, which is a scary target and I'm very happy to trade some hits with that one as well. And as soon as I see that there is a Cataphrag, which is pushing ahead because he probably wanted to help out his buddy, I was so happy because I have the perfect spot for that, I am in optimal range and now I can start shooting my ER large lasers without any return fire. So this is kind of the best spot to be in, if you can shoot freely at your enemies uh, without getting any retaliation. Uh, the Viper is coming in here, he tries to retreat from the spot because he sees that it's getting too hot. But um, speaking of hot, I pop my cool shot, I continue the damage, I wanted to deal as much damage as possible in that early phase, just to get uh, a nice advantage for our team here. Shooting at the Kid Fox now and at this point we got already two kills here. So coming back to that spot and just applying a bit of pressure so that the enemy had to retreat was probably the smartest choice here. The problem is that on the other hand, um, we got um, uh, a casualty here, so I don't know what these guys in Golf 7 are up to. I mean, they are kind of doing the exact same thing, uh, going ahead and, and pushing too far into the enemy firing line here. Something made me turn around and I spotted that King Crab here, driving, driving him back, uh, shooting a lot of my weapons to his center torso. And uh, yeah, now it's just uh, a matter of time until my team finally re regroups, uh, gets the balls to actually uh, do a push here. So um, the problem is that I'm getting under heavy fire now without having um, a lot of backup around and uh, I called out for a push to the left side because I was fed up with that whole static gameplay. I wanted to do something, I wanted to push the enemy since we already have two kills on our side ahead and uh, yeah therefore I'm calling out for it. Uh, I got a lot of people following me but sadly it wasn't all of them. So the next encounter that I'm having is uh, that cataphract from before and um, no, actually it's, it's another cataphract. It's not the one that we saw before and uh, I, I was so scared when I saw him shooting at me but actually look at that how easily we ground through that center torso. That was so cool. And here comes our friend the king crab from before and the enemy is just uh, yeah, trying to regroup, trying to retreat. Uh, we are applying a lot of pressure to them now and we, we deal so much damage with that build. I really, really like it. I was a bit cocky at this point. I was like, okay, we got a Kodiak here. He is already damaged in the center. Let's bring it on. Who is the better laser boat? What do you have? What do I have? And he has an even Jaguar as well. And as you can see, I win this encounter and I am so, so happy about it. I was a bit panicked at one point. As you can see, uh, I'm shooting my lasers all over the place, uh, trying to get a bit more damage to the enemy and I screw up my positioning with the arms here, doing uh, my damage to the building instead of the enemies. But um, yeah, that, that build just deals damage, as I said before. You just need to lead your lasers to a single component and then you shoot your pairs one after another and at some point the component will just fall off and the enemy will be destroyed. So that was um, basically the game. We have one more enemy which is a mauler that tries to retreat into the Gov 6 area here but he has nowhere to run. He tries to shoot um, and tries to fight his way out but we have 11 kills already. He is the last one and there is no backup for him anymore. I got the kill and uh, that's it. That was the second round and when you take a look at my paper doll at my damage grid again, I absorbed a lot of damage and I think again this is so important when you play an assault make no matter what try to share some armor. This is all I want to say here. 844 damage, got 3 kills, 8 assists, 3 kill most damage dealt and uh, some components destroyed and yeah that's it, that's your daily dose for today. I hope you liked it and if you did don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel and um, yeah I hope to see you on the battlefield. Goodbye. <laughs>